T&W Stamping in Ohio is a contract manufacturer for the heavy-duty truck market. A labor-intensive part of the company's metal fabricating process is tending resistive welders, a task now handled by universal robots. When we started looking into automation, we had just received a new contract from a large customer of ours. Volume on it wasn't huge, about 40,000 parts per year, but each of those parts has eight weld nuts that go onto it. So 320,000 weld nuts, it's a lot of operations that we had to go through. When we were looking at automation, workforce costs absolutely played a part in that, as well as the cost for the fixtures that we would have had to put in place as well. When our engineers were looking at the UR robot, we were stunned at the cost. Some of the larger robots, they're six figures, and we were expecting a, a much larger number. Uh, we were able to implement the cell for less than what we would have spent for fixtures for that, as well as where we have three less operators performing those functions. With the UR robot, we were able to use it as the fixture itself, and so we were able to implement that for roughly 30% less than what we normally would have paid. The UR robot actually picks the part up on the datum hole. The bracket comes down the belt, the Cognix camera takes a picture of it, that way the robot knows where to go and pick it up. From there, the robot will index it through each of the welders and get the weld nuts in the correct position. It will also know if a weld nut is not present, upside down, and it will actually accommodate for that. At the end of the cycle, it actually goes to another station where there's a final camera. It'll take a picture of the part and make sure that the part has all eight weld nuts, they're in the correct position, and they all have threads. And keep the part within print tolerance of what the customer expects. The benefits that we see from installing the UR robot really is consistency. Uh, it does a fantastic job. The ROI on the robot, I would say the robot itself, payback was less than four months. We've been running the UR robot for almost two years now. Uh, we've had no uh, downtime related to that. We're in the neighborhood of 40% more efficient than we normally would have been. Up front, when we were invited to come look at an application solution for TNW, we knew that the robot could pick in place on a resistive welder. Nobody had been successful with it to our knowledge. A known issue with the resistive welders is the electromagnetic pulse that they put out that blanks out the robot's servo motors. Crumb Manufacturing overcame this obstacle by grounding the robot and adding a non-metallic material to the custom-made end-of-arm tooling, which distanced the robot further away from the welder. The ability to reallocate four operators and have one robot produce this much production is a home run. We will definitely see more integration of universal robots with resistive welders and welding equipment altogether. I think absolutely the UR robot has empowered our operators. They may have been a little nervous initially, uh, but once they got into the cycle, it's been worked out well for both us and the workforce. And the other operators are off doing other more value-added operations for us now. Uh, as far as interfacing with the robot, I signed a bid to where that would be my, my job exclusively. And uh, I must admit, I was a little overwhelmed. It seemed like a lot to take in, but the robot is actually uh, um, user-friendly. We do have some other scenarios where we see future uh, welding applications as well. Our intention is to put a torch on a UR robot and start MIG welding. This will be a new uh, process for the robot as opposed to what it's doing today because it will actually be doing the welding in this application versus holding the part in place on its own.